Hey, this is Bill from Model A Metal. I got an update on the rescue dog, so let's take a look. I got my sub rail extensions in and uh, we're going to uh, I'm gonna have to paint behind them I still got a little bit of rust here I got rust here holes that you know it'd be a shame to do all this work and not fix this so I'll probably fix this and that you can see there's a rust hole there uh, and uh, I'm gonna have to paint behind the subrail extension. Okay, I got this all in. I mean, it's all looking pretty good. It's pretty lined up. This side's really good as far as where this belongs. So there's this funky little tab that belongs here. Uh, I'll show it to you in a second. Another thing I'm gonna wind up doing, uh, fill in that hole, fill that little a piece of hole. I'll probably put copper behind it and fill it with weld and then re-drill it. This side, this piece is all whole and it's good. This lines up or I can get it to line up and that's probably the first hole that I'm going to commit to. And then this side is rotted out. So I'm going to have to make all this piece that goes here. I'm going to repair this. So uh, Another thing that I've done is I put a wire down the center. I don't think it's perfect yet. It's all bent up and stuff. But I put a wire so I can measure. I'll be able to measure, and i got to do a way better job of getting a straight wire and getting it in the center. But I'll be able to measure from here to the center and then from here to the other side. And I'll be able to position these correctly so that they match. And like I said, this side looks like uh, this is where this belongs. The other side needs to be pulled in. So this side needs to be positioned and pulled in. And uh, that's why I ran this wire down the middle. So I can get a measurement from the center to there and, and again the center to here. And I can determine where this, uh, where this will be located this way. Also, I'll be able to uh, here I get this rusty old dash rail. I'll be able to measure down from here to here and from here to here and get and get this height right. So I mean it's pretty much dictated by these screw holes here, but I still want to double check that height. I patched this from another piece. I made this from just a a piece of stock metal. Uh, I put a new guy. I got another gas tank. And what's really cool is take a look at this. That looks like the car was like they were built together. And it's not. This came from, I don't know, Indiana or somewhere. So this came from Rhode Island. And I bought this gas tank. And here's the old one. So apparently it was the same color. It has the same patina. Uh, this gas tank's in really rough shape. It has rust through holes on the bottom. It had this piece pulled out. It had this cool old voltage regulator on it, though. So this tank's rough. And uh, this new tank is, uh, pretty, is a pretty good match. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to keep the patina on this car. I've been thinking about it. Here's a door. Here's a really good reason that I wouldn't, because this door does not match. It just totally doesn't match. So the other door is the same. So I think I'm going to wind up painting this car. And I, want, I think that I'm going to do a quickie spray paint job on it. We have a local place that will put the uh, color in a spray can for you. 
And I think I'm going to figure out it's just some kind of blue that this car was. And I think I'm going to keep it that same blue color. All right, so I'm getting ready to weld up this panel. Oh. And I want to try TIG welding it. And what I've done is I've put a, I have put a piece of copper in here. So, joint. The challenge with this is that there's old metal and new metal. And the new metal's thicker, and the old metal is pitted and thin. So it's going to have impurities. It's thinner. So, so if I get the thicker metal too hot, it'll burn that away. So I have to carefully um, heat up the thick metal and pull it on. So what I've done is um, I put a piece of copper in here. It's not very thick, but um, it's going to be on the weld joint on the backside clamp. So it does two things. It keeps the gas from flowing through, so the gas coverage is better, and it also absorbs heat. So it's going to help absorb heat on that old metal. And we're going to try to get that TIG welded up, and it should be challenging. So one thing I've been doing lately to get my welds better is I've been cleaning everything with acetone. And you know, you hear it, and you say, yeah, yeah, you clean it with acetone. But when you do, it really makes a difference. So uh, I'm going to clean my rod. I'm going to clean my uh, tip. And I'm going to clean all the surface. I'm going to clean that piece of copper. I'm also going to weld this up tonight, too. So we'll get that crack welded up. Okay, so back to the subrail extension. So I got them in, and um, here's here's uh, where I'm at with the with the uh, rivets. So here's a quarter inch rivet, and it's just too big. So that comes with some kit for this comes with a Model A rivet kit. So this is the 3 16th rivet that I used on the subrail, and they work fine because I was br drilling brand new holes. When you take the 3 16th rivet and you try to put it in all these holes where these go, these holes are too big. So what I did, and this, this head does not match what Henry used. So that's a little too round. So I'm not really happy with this, with these rivets, but it, it doesn't matter. It's not like a restoration. So I got some 732nd rivets, and these are 732nd. So when I go to replace all these, these rivets, I'll drill these out to 732nd, and they're going to be nice and tight. So that so we'll drill out new. This is a 316th aluminum rivet. So the only problem is I got these truss heads, and this head's not correct either. So, uh, I, you know, I might go for it anyway. 100 rivets cost $15 and $15 for shipping. So I spent $30 for this, and being as cheap as I am, I really uh, I don't want to buy more rivets. And these are too small. These are too big. Uh, now the head on this aluminum one is a nice, nice head, but those are aluminum. That's not going to work. They're also 316. So I'm probably going to use these big old truss heads, uh, 732nds, and they're probably going to look just fine. Like I say, it's not a, um, a restoration. So I'm about to take uh, all this apart again. I'm going to commit to this one hole here. And I'm going to get a bolt through that when I get it back together. But I'm going to take the cowl apart again, and I'm going to finally rivet the, the subrail extensions into the cowl. So I'm finally going to rivet these subrail extensions into the cowl, get some paint in there, and then we'll be ready to bolt this thing down and move forward, get some doors on it. Uh, another thing I did, which is kind of odd, but I did it anyway, I wasn't happy with the way that the uh, the way that the wood 
fit in here. The wood block that I have here is only this big. So what I did is I added about, I'd say that's almost a half an inch. I added about a half an inch to, I made a new block. I had some stock, I had a planer, I planed it down, I traced the other one, and this, the block doesn't sit on top of that hole, so it still doesn't really, I mean, it's at least it's lined up. So it, I wasn't happy with the fact that um, only part of this piece right here was supported, so I got that underneath there, and I made wider blocks. So here's the other side. So I actually made larger wood blocks. And uh, the reason that they make, that Henry made these things the way he did, is because there were rivets. So there's rivets underneath here. So this was riveted from the factory. So the rivets that sticking through needed the room. So the block uh, left room for the rivets. Also, there's rivets here, and I was wondering why the block wasn't longer and wider, but now I know that this rivet here, this rivet here, and these two rivets, uh, if you make that block too big, then the block hits the rivets on the other side. So all this will be riveted back together. So as far as this funky little piece that goes right here, I'll show you on my Roadster. There's a funky little bent piece that, uh, I mean, it's stamped out and it's riveted. Also, I don't have this piece. I'm not too worried about it. So this is my Roadster. And this, I um, guess I'm going to duplicate that piece and actually rivet and make it look like a ridge. And here you can see, you can see the rivets. This is all uh, original. This piece and this piece is original, Henry. So um, you can see where those rivets are located. I guess there wasn't a rivet there. I don't know if there is on the other side. But um, this is what the original looks like. And luckily, I can take measurements off this. All right, so I... I took a carriage bolt, and this carriage bolt fit the square hole really nicely. And I've got the carriage bolt sticking down. So I'm eyeballing it for plumb. I mean, I could level the frame and then plumb this. So I'm going to take my wire off of this, or string. You can see this one's all crooked, if you can see it. And it will be done a lot better. But I did the same thing in front. I did a carriage bolt in the front. And I have this giving me a center line. I'll double check the center line from the frame. And uh, we're going to keep moving on this rescue dog, on this dog. So here's another thing that, um, that I'm working on is my banger. And this car ran last year. I hope to include a video of it with my wife commenting. This is what we do during the recess. Yeah. I mean, by we, I mean those two. Because, you know, life is fun. Oh, boy. And look at him. Don't leave the driveway. Don't, no, no, bye. Don't leave the driveway. Well, let's just hope they listen to me, because they do, always. Oh, I don't think that thing has seat belts. Is he coming back?
Yep, it's coming back. There he is. Why did we need this car, you ask? We didn't. We really fucking didn't. He just thought it'd be a good idea to buy it a few months ago. Yep. There it is. There it is. There it is. See this one? This this car right there? This one? The same fucking car, just without the top. So did he need another one? No. Nope. Look at him. Happy, happy, happy. Yep. I don't know. I give up. Uh, but this car ran, and then all of a sudden it was frozen, and I, so I put a bar on the crank pulley, and I broke it like a potato chip. So this head had a crack in it, and uh, when it warmed up, it would seal it, but cracks right here. So I ran it, and then a little bit of water was coming out of here. So I'm thinking that some of the water, when from when I ran it, went inside the motor and caused some rust and caused it to seize. I'm hoping with some penetrating oil and a little moving back and forth, I'm going to be able to get that banger free. Um, I want to drive it. This this car is drivable. I think it needs the transmission looked at. It made a lot of noise. And I'm looking forward to getting this rescue dog moving, get the doors on it. If anybody wants to donate uh, any parts, I need that crank pulley. I haven't gotten one yet. And if anybody, I know this is asking a lot, if anybody wants to donate some Roadster doors, I would certainly enjoy that. So I also need these hinges. Uh, if anybody wants to donate hinges, I have an original pair on this side. They're pretty rough. The pins won't come out. So I'm thinking of buying the hinges. I don't want to. I want to have original Ford hinges. But these uh, were... These came with one door, and they're really a mess. And they don't really match the original hinges. So... Uh, to be specific, what I need, I scored these hinges. So what I need is the two half hinges that go on the door of the right-hand side, the, uh, the passenger side. So uh, a lot of work happening with the rescue dog. Uh, I'll still take your comments on whether we do patina or not, but I think, uh, I think this car is going to get paint. So it was a project to get experience. It's a project to learn. I've learned a lot, and what I've learned more than anything is that if you were to do this to make money, you would not make any money. So you gotta do it for the love of the Model A, and uh, uh, I'm excited about this car. I got a lot of parts. I got a radiator. I've got, a, uh, I've got some grill shells. I've got the hack doors. We gotta do a lot of work on the doors. You know, there's a lot of work done on the back. I have the, uh, the bed. And I've got a flat head motor. I might take the banger out of the uh, 31 and put it in the rescue dog and then put the flatty in the 31. But I would like to drive the banger for a while uh, in the uh, 31. So that's probably what's going to happen. I got a buddy that will probably lend me a downdraft intake. And I, I scored some pipes today, some old flathead pipes um, that were brand new. I mean, they're new old stock. And I think that I can make a header for this car out of all those pipe pieces that I scored. Comment. So please like and subscribe if you want to follow along with the rescue dog and uh, watch this thing get built. Um, once we get these subrail extensions in, we're really going to start jamming on it. So I'm excited about getting this thing done. So uh, here it is, Rescue Dog Build, saving it from a junk pile. This is what we do during the recess. Yeah.
I mean, by we, I mean those two. 